Ever think about how, like, Technology could be at the center of a murder investigation. It's crazy, right? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Today, we're diving into the Delphi murders, a case that really highlights that. Definitely. So this case, it just seems like a normal afternoon hike gone wrong. Totally. Yeah. And you guys have sent in tons of articles, research, even court documents about this. Wow, they did their homework. It seems like you really want to go beyond the headlines with this one and figure out why this case is still so captivating, even after all these years. Absolutely, and for good reason. The Delphi murders, I mean, they really gripped the nation, and not just because of the tragic loss of those two young lives, but also because of the evidence that was left behind. You know? Right, and it was supposed to be such a normal day, too. Yeah. February 13th, 2017, Libby German and Abby Williams, two teenagers from Delphi, Indiana, they decide to spend their day off school just exploring the Delphi historic trails like so many people do. Beautiful area and they never made it home. Oh. And what really gets me about this case is that Libby, she actually captured evidence herself. It's unbelievable. Yeah, a video on her cell phone of what seems to be their killer. I got chills when I first heard that detail too. You rarely hear about a victim actually capturing their own assailant. I know, it's heartbreaking, but it's also incredible, right? Exactly. We don't hear about that every day. No, and I think it was really Libby's quick thinking to even think to start recording in a situation like that, that's probably why investigators were able to get some pretty valuable leads. Oh, for sure. The video, along with that audio clip that was released, they show a man and he's approaching the girls on the moon and high bridge. And he says, guys, down the hill. Oh, my gosh. It's giving me chills just thinking about it. And there's also this possible mention of the word gun. But that part has been a little difficult to confirm for investigators, for sure. Right, because the audio isn't totally clear. Exactly, yeah. It's just eerie to think about, though, you know, that she might have sensed the danger and that her actions in that moment, they must have been terrifying. I can't even imagine. But those actions might hold the key to solving this whole thing. They very well could. So they have the video, they have the audio. You would think it would be an open and shut case, right? You would think, but this is where it gets really complicated. Okay. Because despite this seemingly really strong evidence, this case went unsolved for years. Oh, wow. Years, yeah. And that's part of what made it such a national obsession. You had social media, you had true crime communities, and everybody was just desperate for answers. Yeah, and you can understand why. Two young lives cut short, this chilling video evidence, and no arrest. Right, exactly. It's definitely the kind of case that stays with you. Now, one of the things that really stood out to me while I was looking into all this was this whole catfish angle. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So to understand the complexities, we have to talk about Keegan Klein and this online persona, this fake persona, Anthony Schatz. Okay, that name, Anthony Schatz, that's practically synonymous with the Delphi murders now. Right. But for people who maybe aren't as familiar with the ins and outs of this case, can you just break down exactly why that online identity is so important? Sure. So catfishing, basically, it's when someone creates a fake online persona to deceive other people. And a lot of times it's for romantic or exploitative purposes. And it turns out this guy, Klein, he was using this tactic to talk to underage girls. And it turned out that he'd actually been in contact with Libby German th through this fake profile shortly before her death. No way. Wait, so he wasn't just some random online creep. There was an actual connection to Libby. Yeah. So this guy, Klein, had been talking to her online, pretending to be someone else, and then she ends up murdered. That is horrifying. It's really disturbing. And so Klein was eventually arrested and charged with 30 felonies, including child exploitation and possession of child pornography. He is currently serving a 43-year sentence. Okay, so just to be clear, because I know this part can get a little confusing sometimes, yeah. Klein was never charged in connection with the Delphi murders themselves, right? That's correct. He has not been directly linked to the murders officially. But still, the timing of these online interactions, his past behavior, it definitely casts a shadow over the whole investigation. A huge shadow, yeah. It's this unsettling parallel storyline. Exactly. And it really shows you the dangers of online predation. Absolutely. You have a young girl who's active on social media like most teenagers are these days. And it's through those online channels that she may have met someone who wanted to do her harm. Mm -hmm. That's a chilling thought. It really is. It really makes you think twice about what you post online. But that's not even the end of the story. For years, this investigation seems to hit dead end after dead end. Right. And then, in 2022, they finally arrest someone. Richard Allen, a local guy who worked at the CVS in town. Yeah, and it's weird, right? Because this wasn't some totally unknown guy who suddenly popped up on their radar. 
He had actually already been interviewed by police back in 2017, right after the murders. Wait, hold on. So you're saying they talked to this guy early on and he still slipped through the cracks for five years. Five years. What happened there? That's what everyone wanted to know when they heard about his arrest. Right. So they were sifting through mountains of tips and leads, potential suspects. I bet. But something about those initial interviews, something about this guy Alan's story, it just didn't sit right. So they went back, re-examined everything, and this time it clicked. So what was it? What finally made them look at Richard Allen as their prime suspect? Well, remember those details about what the guy in Libby's video was wearing? Oh, yeah, like the clothing? Yeah, the Carhartt jacket, those blue jeans. Mm -hmm. Allen admitted to owning clothes that were very similar. Okay. And he also admitted to being on the trail that day, even said he was in the general area of the girls around the same time they were killed. Hmm, not a good look. No, not at all. But his explanation for being there, it raised some eyebrows. He claimed he was just watching the fish. Watching the fish. That's what he said. Come on, who goes to a hiking trail to watch the fish? <laughs> Sounds like a pretty weak excuse. Yeah, pretty weak. And it wasn't just what he said that tripped him up. Do you remember that unspent .4U caliber shell casing? The one they found near the bodies? Oh, right. I remember reading about that. They kept that detail really quiet for years. It seemed like a big deal, but they didn't say much about it at the time. And for good reason, they held onto that card close to their chest because it turned out to be a major turning point in the case. When they searched Richard Allen's house, they found a .40 caliber pistol. Oh, wow. And get this. Ballistics tests confirmed that that shell casing, the one from the crime scene, had been fired from Allen's gun. Whoa. You don't have to be a forensic expert to know that's bad news for this guy. Talk about damning evidence. Ballistics, that's huge in court. It's like a gun's fingerprint. Every firearm leaves little unique markings on the bullets and shell casings, and those can be matched back to the weapon. So this wasn't just a coincidence, like a lucky guess. Yeah. They could say for sure that the shell casing at the crime scene came from that gun they found in Allen's house. Absolutely, a direct link. It's hard to argue with that kind of scientific evidence, you know? <laughs> but here's the thing. Even with all that evidence stacked against him, Richard Allen says he's innocent. It's hard to imagine being in his shoes, yeah. right? Facing those charges, all that evidence against him. Yeah. What's his defense? What are they saying happened? His lawyers, they're working hard to find holes in the prosecution's case. Well, yeah. Which, you know, that's their job. Of course. So they've suggested that maybe what Alan told police was like misconstrued or taken out of context. Like, and remember those other potential suspects we talked about? Right, right. His legal team is really pushing on that. Trying to create doubt. So basically they're saying, yeah, okay, maybe he was there. And yeah, maybe he had a gun like the one that fired the shell casing. But that doesn't automatically make him a killer. Right. They're saying someone else could have done it. Trying to plant that seed of doubt. Exactly. And one of the things they brought up, which I know we talked about a little bit before, was that whole white nationalist theory. Right. That was a weird one. Yeah. What was that about? So in one of the pretrial hearings, they tried to say that maybe Libby and Abby stumbled across some kind of ritualistic killing. Oh, wow. Like something orchestrated by a white nationalist group. Really? Yeah. They were pointing to stuff like the position of the girls' bodies, certain objects they found at the scene, and they were trying to use those details to create this narrative that someone else was responsible. It does sound a little like something out of a movie, you know? Yeah, for sure. But do they have any actual evidence to back that up? Not really, and I think that was the problem. It was all speculation, not a lot of concrete proof. Yeah. And I think the judge saw it right through it, too, because he ended up dismissing the theory. Good. He called it a fanciful defense, and it seemed like he thought they were more interested in getting media attention than actually presenting a believable alternative. Oh, okay, so that theory's out. Yeah. So after all this back and forth, the accusations, the evidence, all the courtroom drama, mm -hmm. It all comes down to the trial, which is happening right now. Right now, as we speak, yeah. Wow. What's it like over there? Is it crazy? It's intense, for sure. Jury selection just started, and it's a huge moment for everybody. I bet. For the families of Libby and Abby, who've been waiting six years for justice. I can't even imagine. For the people of Delphi, you know, who have lived under this cloud for so long. Yeah. And then the prosecution and the defense, of course, They've been at this for years. Yeah, six years is a long time to wait for answers, to feel any sense of closure. I mean, how do you even begin to heal from something like this? That's a good question. It's unfathomable to me, really. This case, with all the twists and turns, the strange details, 
It's captivated the whole nation for years. And it really shows you the darkness that can be hidden beneath the surface of what we think are normal lives. That's very well said. And even if Richard Allen is found guilty, even if they get the verdict everyone's hoping for, there's still that question. Totally. Will it ever really be enough? You know, that's the thing about these cases, isn't it? Even with a conviction, someone to blame, there are still always going to be unanswered questions. Questions that might stay with this case and this community forever. It's true. And that's something I think we all have to sit with, you know, especially as we follow this trial, wait for a verdict. Like, what will it really take to bring true closure to the Delphi murders? Will we ever know why this happened? Will we ever truly understand what could drive a person to do something so awful? Those are tough questions, and I wish we had easier answers. But if anyone listening wants to do a little digging on their own, check out the evidence and the different theories and all the details. We'll be sure to link to all the research you sent us down in the show notes. Yeah, dive in, because sometimes looking at these hard topics, these real-life mysteries, it helps us learn more about ourselves and the world we live in, you know? I completely agree. So until next time, keep asking those questions, keep searching for answers, and never stop learning, you guys. Never stop learning.